It's uh, James Tua. So, uh, yes. Well, good evening, everybody. And uh, it's a it's a real hang on. I have to be in front of the camera here. We're going to videotape this for folks who can't make it out tonight. <laughs> It's, uh, it's really a great pleasure to uh, be, be here and be helping you folks out with your local area plan. And I, I like to emphasize it's your plan. It's not really the consultant's plan. And right now, it's maybe not even uh, Brian's plan. I think you guys should really take ownership. And the whole idea of having as much public process as possible is to get you guys to really think about what you want your community to be like. So I'll start off here just... Uh, introducing the team so this is me here i'm a architect uh, registered architect and also a registered landscape architect by training uh, those two disciplines cross over and you get a planner out of that so uh, about half my work uh, professionally is planning and i have lots of experience in smaller communities i've just finished doing a local area plan up in courtney in one of their growth interfaces areas and also did the plan for cedar main street uh, which was an effort two years ago and have done some work on Bowen Island envisioning their waterfront and, and their main street which is actually where I hail from. So I'm not a city slicker. I do live in a very small community actually. Bowen's got a population very similar to Crofton. Uh, so I'm well aware of all the challenges a small community has bringing good services and, and uh, bringing amenities. Uh, the wish list is often long and the resources are often small. So it requires a creative uh, outlook on life and, and a community that really tries hard uh, to get things done. And one of the reasons uh, I'm really excited about your project is I came in the summertime before I was shortlisted. I like to kind of see what the community is about before engaging in these projects. And uh, the first thing I stumbled upon was your boardwalk. And uh, I was really taken away by it. A beautiful, beautiful waterfront. And I work in so many communities where they just don't have a grasp on their waterfront. And you've already envisioned something, you've built something that everybody should be very proud of. So I think that's an incredible amenity and that's a great sort of first step for envisioning what Crofton may look like 30 years from now. So congratulations on that. So uh, the, the, uh, the municipality of North Cowichan uh, asked for a very, uh, a very broad team with uh, several experts on it. So I'm really kind of the orchestrate, uh, uh, the, the leader of the orchestra, if you will, the conductor. Uh, but on my team, I will have, first of all, the advisory working group. And I'd like to thank all those folks for coming out. I know it's a lot of effort to, 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 to donate your time. Uh, and then also, I have some of my own hired guns. So Dennis, could you, Dennis, Dennis is in the back of the room. Dennis is a, uh, a professional planner, consulting planner. He's worked both in the public sector and the private sector. And he will be helping me out with a lot of the policy. Obviously, he's at all the meetings, and he's also a resource person for, for the group and for members of the public. Uh, and he will particularly come into play when it take, comes time to take the pretty pictures and turn those into policy as well, because without good policy, all of this community envisioning really could go nowhere. So you don't have to worry about that. And then another very important part of this is the economics. So it's all very fine and well to draw beautiful plans, beautiful drawings, beautiful en en envisionment of what a community can be like. But if it's not based on some sound research and some, some real grounded base with uh, the current economic trends in your community, it's probably not going to do a lot of good. So uh, Greg Corey is our economics expert. Uh, Greg uh, hails from uh, a long career. He lives in San Francisco, a long career of working in many, many different communities around the world. And I first met Greg about 25 years ago working on Sun Peaks, which started as basically Todd Mountain and it's ended up now as a resort municipality with its own mayor. Uh, so it's come a long way and Greg was an integral part of envisioning the economics of that. And the reason I brought him on this team, and this is how I always sell him to communities, is his predictions came true on Sun Peaks, so he really gave us good advice. And Greg's also not afraid to say uh, things people don't want to hear as well, which is important. Uh, if things aren't going to work, if ideas aren't going to work, because they're not based in, in sound science. And then, not in the room today, but will be an integral part in the process when we really get into envisioning things, is, uh, is Rick Hall, who will be a presenter. He's an expert on transportation, parking, traffic issues. This is something that, uh, that the community wanted us to look at in the master plan. He actually lives in Florida. He's a world expert. He works in a lot of small communities as well. So he's not one of these guys that's a SkyTrain expert. He's, he really understands small communities. 
uh, and he fits in, I think, nicely to, to round out the team. And then finally, I have Jeff, Jeff McSwain, who uh, does a lot of my artwork, a lot of the water, watercolor uh, exhibits that will come out of the design charrette, but he's also got a master's degree in landscape architecture, fantastic person, great facilitator, so he'll be also facilitating uh, the next workshop, and he's bringing with him his son, who will be our sort of technician when we, when we get further into the process. So, as I mentioned, this was my inspiration to come here. Just, you know, some wonderful, wonderful little things happening in your waterfront. And I think that's a good, good first step for moving forward. It certainly inspired me. So, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the process. And uh, really, the process is about a design shred, envisioning from a community standpoint what Crofton can look like. So, it's a little bit like jazz music. It's sort of improvisational improvisational and so things may change along the along the road that's why we we kind of call it a draft process but we started with uh, with a couple of meetings I met with staff and we've had an advisory working group meeting we've gone over my sort of process outline everybody's agreed in it uh, we're here where we're starting to think about the, the baseline information what you see in the room today is all the baseline information about this is what Crofton looks like today why it looks like this today uh, uh, Greg will be doing the market research and the economics, giving us sort of some, some sound opinions of where you, where you stand today in terms of, of the marketplace. And we are right here in the process, this first open house. So really what this open house is about is an introduction to the project for the public and, and an opportunity to weigh in even before we start thinking about the design. And then out of this there will be a report that we will do, we'll summarize the input we get from today's open house, put that in the report and that will be online. So the next stage, uh, this is really where all the creativity will happen. It's a design charrette. So, so what is a design charrette? <clears throat> a design charrette is where the community comes together in a round table format. I, you have a lot of people who probably have a stake in this. So I'm envisioning two or three teams of citizens coming together, sitting around tables and envisioning uh, with the help of, of folks like myself who can help draw and bring out the ideas and put those ideas on the paper. So we're envisioning this to be a three-day process. Uh, the first day will be a lot of talking and words and brainstorming. Uh, perhaps in the afternoon we'll start drawing things. We're looking at opportunities and constraints. You can see here, here's one of our facilitators from the Cedar Main Street. We do have drawings out so people can draw and, and inform the process. Uh, and then in day two, we will try to translate all your ideas into pictures, into three-dimensional pictures, because ultimately at the end of the day, planning is about visualization of what your community can look like. And through the visualization, then we can write the, we can write the, uh, the code, the bylaws, that will, will give certainty, as, as Brian alluded to, to, to you as citizens and then to developers and investors, uh, retail merchants, uh, anybody who wants to come to Crofton and do business. So out of that, we will compile uh, the information from the workshop, the design workshop or design charrette. Uh, and what we plan to do is we plan to create a website, put all of the pictures that the community produces and the experts produce online, and, and distill out of that 10 or 20 key elements that people have come up with of how we can visualize Crofton with some change, this change will be inevitable here. As, you, as you've heard, we will have some growth in Crofton. And, and we'll put that online, and we'll let everybody in the community weigh in. So during the design charrette, it's really about visualizing your, your, as yourselves as citizens, and then we'll put that out to the broader community to weigh in, and also you folks can weigh in, and then we can weigh in on all these ideas that we come up with. And, uh, and then the conclusion of the design process will be sort of a feedback, it's here's what we've heard from folks on the various concepts. And we're thinking that out of the design threat, we might have more than one idea, we might have more than one concept. So we'll have the public weigh in as well, you as the public, the community as the public, online, on this, on this website that we'll create to, to help rank some of the ideas we have. And then ultimately we'll have the final design. So, so out of that, then we'll have really great input and we'll be able to compile sort of a final plan that ultimately the process uh, we'll end up with, uh, with new zoning and, and possibly three-dimensional zoning, design guidelines. We'll have some, some certain policy that will help people envision as, as, as buildings get built, as, as investors come, come into Crofton, and, and, and hopefully create a lot of positive change. And I'd like to emphasize again, this will be your plan. So at the end of the day, hopefully when you look at it, you'll see your own ideas, your own inspirations, and your own vision. 
And, and our job is to be teachers, to teach you a little bit about community planning and to hopefully draw out the creativity from every one of you. And then in the last stage, uh, we will come up with the implementation strategy. So that's really the design policy, the planning policy that will go into laws, bylaws, uh, and, and code that will help inform, inform developers in the future. So that's, that's an outline of the process.